Hello again folks, good to have you with us. We're on uh, what's known as Benson Street here in Lisburn. It's uh, been intersected now by a, a new road, but something nice about Benson Street, I know some people in our church uh, lived in Benson Street over the years. And just to my right here, there's what was the old Wallace High School, so it's quite a historic building. But you'll notice the sign just behind me here. I'm sure you can identify it right away. It's quite self-explanatory. It just means dead end. There's no through way. If you go up this little street here, it just ends at a wall and uh, you can't get your car through. You can't drive through because quite simply, it's a dead end. And you know, for many people in our society, that's how they view life. It's a dead end. Uh, there's no hope. There's no way through. It's difficult for some. Some feel that there's no point going on. And then whenever we think about eternity as well. Some people think, well, you reach the end of your life and that's it. It's a dead end. You cease to exist and there's nothing after. But the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And so certainly death is not the end. There's an afterlife, a heaven or a hell. And maybe that's something that you need to think about where you're going. But think about life generally. Is your life just like a dead end? You maybe think, well, I'm in a, a dead end marriage, a dead end job. I don't see any reason or hope for living. And it just seems that everything around me is futile. Solomon, the great king of Israel, in many respects felt like that. He was born with such hope and such promise. He was given such wisdom and wealth as well. And yet there was a time in Solomon's life whenever he got his eyes off the Lord, he got badly diverted in his walk with God and fell into all sorts of idolatry and just began to live a godless life and began really just to live for this world. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, when he talks about wealth, he talks about prosperity, he talks about his businesses, he talks about his property, he talks about his wives, he talks about his concubines, he talks about all of his endeavors. And you know what he says? He says it's all vanity. That just means it's all empty. It's like chasing the wind. There's nothing in it. It's a dead end, if you like. And at last he came to realize that he needed to remember his creator and put God first. And you know, the reality is that life is a dead end without the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lovely verse in Hebrews chapter 7 and 26 where it says concerning the Savior, he's our great high priest, and it says such an high priest becomes us. Now, a, a priest in scripture did two things. He, first of all, offered sacrifice for the sins of the people. And then as well, he, how you doing? he uh, prayed for the people as well the high priest. In that little verse in Hebrews 7, 26, it says, such an high priest becomes us. And that really means such an high priest suits us or such an high priest fits us. If you were to go and get measured up for a suit and the tailor knew what he was doing and he took all of your measurements and he went away and he cut the cloth accordingly and did a good job, that suit of clothing, it suits you, it becomes you it fits you because it's made exclusively for you. And that's what Paul's saying here in Hebrews 7, 26. It's not just that the Son of God became a man in the incarnation, that's true. But more than that, he becomes us, he fits us. Now there are some things in life that people engage in and indulge in that don't fit us at all. We just weren't made for them. Alcohol, drugs, illicit sex, all that sort of stuff. We weren't made to live like that. And then there are other things in life that don't just seem to fit us right. They maybe come a little bit closer to the ideal, but there's still something missing. Maybe it's uh, religion and we realize, well, yes, there's a God. I would need to worship him. We go to church, but still there's something just not right. Doesn't fit us right. Doesn't sit well with us. A little bit like Goldilocks and the three bears. And she sat in a particular chair and it was too low and then another was too high or too soft. And then she found one that was just right. Same with the porridge, same with the bed. You remember the, the nursery rhyme or the, the little children's story? There are things in life that don't fit us at all. There are other things that just don't fit right. But Jesus Christ fits us perfectly. He becomes us. And that's what the verse says. 
Exactly as Pascal said, inside all of us there's a God-shaped vacuum and only God can fill it. And you can try to fill that emptiness, that void in your life with so many different things. But if it's not with God, if it's not with Jesus Christ, you'll find that you're at a dead end. But whenever you receive Christ, you discover he's the one that suits us. He's the one that becomes us. He's the one that fits us. What a wonderful Savior. I trust that you know him. And if you don't, why not trust in him even today? Thank you for listening. See you next time.